Now watch this really carefully. Right now I'm shooting with DJI's brand new drone Mavic 3 Pro and right now I'm using its first camera that you may know from Mavic 3 and Mavic 3 Classic. It's the Hasselblad camera with Micro Four Thirds sensor. This 24 millimeter equivalent lens can give you variable aperture from f2.8 to f11. It can focus from one meter to infinity and the field of view is 84 degrees. That's why we're getting this beautiful open free looking drone shots that we know and love but wait there is more so right now i switch to the second camera this camera has the sensor that we know and love from mavic mini 3 pro they combine this sensor with 70 millimeter f 2.8 medium tele lens and the field of view is down to 35 degrees that's why we're getting this more compressed the backside is probably looking closer to me right now kind of shot this gives us 3x zoom but wait there's more the third camera has a 12 megapixel half inch sensor it has a 166 millimeter f 3.4 lens from the previous mavic 3 but now it can shoot up to 4k 60 frames per second instead of 4k 50. so what that means is now while i'm flying i can get three different compositions without moving the drone anywhere else. This entire time, the drone stayed in the same place. And this gives me a huge flexibility when I'm outside shooting. I can get an establishing shot, a detail shot, and a close-up without even moving my drone. But what makes this so much better, in my opinion, is a feature called Waypoints, which is introduced to Mavic 3 by DJI on December, uh, January 2023. What that does is you basically move your drone wherever you like and you pick that point and then you move somewhere else and you pick that point and you move somewhere else and you pick that point and the dr drone records these locations and you can save it in your remote and then you can repeat the same movement which gives you incredible flexibility. I can go to a place and shoot a sunrise and save that waypoint and then go back there and shoot the same thing during sunset and then combine them together and get this incredible looking mind-blowing video. And here it is, my review unit DJI Mavic 3 Pro Fly More Combo came in this box. Yours is probably going to have the labeling and the photos on it. Inside the box we're greeted with a messenger bag that can hold everything Mavic 3 Pro related, a tiny box that had all sorts of cables for the 100 watt charger. I think these cables are specific for the reviewers as well. Inside the messenger bag we're greeted with 8 propellers, the gorgeous DJI RC Pro remote, two USB-C to USB-C cables, USB-C multi-battery charger, two extra batteries, there's one in the drone as well, and Mavic 3 Pro itself. At first glance, Mavic 3 Pro looks exactly like Mavic 3 or Mavic 3 Classic. But of course, behind the muzzle, Mavic 3 Pro packs three cameras on its giant three-axis gimbal. Other than that, it is identical to Mavic 3. However, it seems like it is cheaper than Mavic 3, which is always good news. Now let's talk about the drone. Apart from the camera and the weight the camera adds to this drone, which affects the flight time, Mavic 3 Pro is exactly the same as Mavic 3. The battery is the same, the propellers are the same, so if you have Mavic 3 you can use those batteries, you, if you have propellers you can use those propellers. 
everything is the same apart from this camera module which looks crazy the regular mavic 3 pro has 8 gigabytes of internal storage and if you get the cine version that has the one terabyte internal storage which also supports apple prores you can record in prores if you get the cine version using all the cameras dji says soon this will be supporting the goggles and DJI RC motion controllers. By the way, if you've never used the motion controller, it makes flying so much fun. And I think if DJI releases just the drone version for purchasing, a lot of people who already have the remotes or the batteries or other stuff may consider upgrading to DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Because this is the same drone, of course, we have the omnidirectional sensing. We have sensors up there. We have sensors back here at the front and underneath the drone. We also have LED lights, which is fantastic when you take off and land when it's not that bright outside. And because the drone weighs 958 grams, the Pro version, the Cine version weighs 963 grams compared to DJI Mavic 3 which was 900 grams so there is let me tell you exactly 6.4 percent increase for DJI Mavic 3 Pro and 7 percent increase for DJI Mavic 3 Pro Cine version. DJI says it brings down the flight time by three minutes from 46 minutes to 43 minutes of course these are the optimum flight conditions and when it comes to hovering it is 37 minutes compared to 40 minutes uh, in my tests, the first flight I did was in a very, very windy situation and it flew for 25 minutes doing everything, switching to sport mode, you know, just going down as fast as I can, switching between cameras, shooting and everything. It was just the way you use the drone. So I got 25 minutes on a very windy day. The gust wind speeds were up to 30 miles or something. It was really crazy. And this drone, by the way, flew like a champ. Uh, and on other days, on regular days like this, I get up to 30 minutes easily while I'm doing everything without limiting myself, without worrying about the battery life. As expected, it has APAS 5.0. What that means is if it senses an object in front of it, it goes around it or you can pick it to stop as well. But it has the APAS 5 from Mavic 3 series. It has the advanced return home. What that means is this drone can come back to where you are. Let's say you lost connection or something happened. It comes back to where it took off following the route it took over there. So if there are some obstacles it may not see like cables and stuff like that, it will not get stuck on those because it will come back just the way it went there. Just like the other Mavic 3 series, it has 15 kilometer range. It's not like you're gonna fly 15 kilometers away but it means it has a really strong connection so if you're in a place where there's a lot of signal noise this will keep connected while you're flying around now let's talk about cameras of course the main camera is from the other Mavic 3 series but this one has something different this can shoot in D-Log M which I don't know if it will come to the other DJI Mavic 3s but this has that feature and there's a feature called night mode and in night mode you can set the ISO up to 12,800 but night mode applies 6% crop and you can only shoot up to 4k 30 frames per second using the main camera with normal color profile main camera can shoot up to 5.1k 50 frames per second and between the resolutions there is no crop in the regular camera mode but if you switch to slow motion it can shoot in 4k 120 frames per second but it applies 29 percent crop to the footage as expected you can use all smart features like active track spotlight or point of interest with the main camera now let's talk about the medium tele camera which is one of my favorite cameras on this uh, drone it can shoot up to 4k 60 frames per second and it supports d-log m and hlg it is a fantastic camera. I actually didn't know if this camera would be good or if DJI would be better adding maybe something that gives us, you know, uh, 14 times zoom. But as soon as I start flying, I realized that uh, three 
X zoom is just the perfect amount to get really nice looking footage. The third camera is the same camera from Mavic 3, but this one can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second as opposed to 4K 50 frames, frames per second. But there is no log. It just shoots in the normal color profile, which is something I really wish this drone would have because the log shooting gives you so much flexibility and then when you switch to the telecamera it only shoots in normal mode which means you get what you get in the regular version it shoots in 8 bit the telecamera the tele lens and if you get the cine version you can shoot in 10 bit because you're shooting in prores when you're flying Using the regular camera, the drone moves around as, it, as you expect it to and as you switch between the lenses, it starts moving smoother and smoother to compensate for the narrower field of view, which I found really useful, really... It makes things so easy when, it, when you want to frame something, when you want to fly around something manually. It is really good. Let's talk about the flying experience because lately I've been flying a lot smaller drones like Mini 3 or Mini 3 Pro. I've been flying them quite a lot. I really enjoy those, especially Mini 3 Pro. Uh, going back to this size drone, for the first couple of minutes, felt like this is such a huge drone. But right now, for example, I don't have that feeling at all. And it is totally worth carrying a drone this size because the confidence it gives you, it doesn't matter if it's windy, it doesn't matter if birds are interested in the drone, the confidence this size drone gives you is something else. Yes, it's a little louder, yes, it's a little more obvious, which is actually good if, while you're flying. Look, with the line of sight, you can see the drone while it's further away. All of those things are really useful, especially while I was flying in the desert during those winds while I was chasing the cars I really didn't care I knew this was gonna be fine it came back just fine it landed like a champ it is an incredible machine I think DJI approaches this as a, a little bit of luxury drone but if you're doing uh, real estate or if you're working with your drone yes this can be approached as a luxury drone but it, I think this will pay for itself really quickly if you're making money with the drones all right, now let's talk about some things I feel like you should know. This thing has the night mode and the slow motion mode, as I mentioned before, but those only work with the main camera. You cannot have a night mode or slow motion using the other cameras, which would have been great. Still, you get 4K 60 frames per second with all of the lenses, but it, it could have been nice to have, you know, something like it would make a real nice parallax effect, I feel. Every camera on this drone needs to be adjusted individually. There's no one setting because there are different cameras that you can pick and say, hey, apply this to all of the cameras. I want to shoot in 4K 60 frames per second and D-log. You cannot do that. You got to go and switch between cameras and put your settings in there and then, or you can do it while you're flying. Except for autofocus. For some reason, when you switch to manual focus, all of these cameras switch to manual focus. When you switch to autofocus, all of them switch to autofocus. That is something to keep in mind. Also, while you're in the air, while you're flying, while you're recording, you can switch between cameras during recording. You gotta stop recording and then switch between cameras. I found that the telecamera has the worst focusing. It's still really good, but when the light is low, it may hunt focus a little bit. So if you're flying during a low light situation, when you dial in your focus, I recommend you to switch to manual focus and it will take care of it. Also during a really windy situation, the telecamera shakes a little bit according to the, the wind you're in, but it is really easy to fix in post. This drone doesn't have a capture for white balance. You can either set Kelvin value or you can set it to auto. You cannot hold a white balance card and say, hey, take this as a reference. But I think compared to Mavic 3, it finds the satellites a lot faster. I know there has been a lot of complaints about Mavic 3's uh, speed when it comes to finding satellites, and DJI has been working on this tremendously as far as I know. 
but I didn't have any problems with this. You just, it's just the expected time. It finds the satellites in expected time. Oh, one thing I wish is that while you're in the medium tele or tele zoom, I wish there was a little window that would still display the ultra wide angle camera. So it would give you a better sense of where you are because while you're using the tele lens, especially while I was shooting the lighthouse it really felt like i was really close to the land but i was far away over the ocean so it would be really nice if i can just see that maybe next to the map or something that would give me so much more confidence while flying in uh, medium tele and tele lens other than that this is the mavic 3 i want it this is the drone that is gonna take my aerial videography to the next level. I love this thing so much. I'm gonna go and fly a little bit more and then I'm gonna edit this video today and it's gonna go live tomorrow. I waited for the last second again to see if it's gonna have any updates, but no, this time all the updates are here. Everything is fine. Good job, DJI. Good job.